Just working on the RM again. This project's taken way too long. But anyways, what I've got here is the linkage bearings. I've made this one greasable. I had to weld a piece of aluminum around because once you once you slide over a rock or something, it's going to not tear the grease nipple out. But I like to have it in the bottom because it's accessible. The other the option would be also to make the bolt greasable. Drill out, drill out a bolt. It is possible. Bolts are hard, but you can do it. Anyway, that's what I did on that one. This is the shock bearing one. Uh, yeah, the, the bottom lower shock bearing, I guess, is what it is. That's what it, it just came apart. It was shot. So I had to order another another bearing kit. I've changed these once before, but it was a while ago. I thought I kept them greased enough, but this one, of course, because the because of the way the race is, you'd probably have to make the bolt greasable, but it's not that hard just to pop that out and grease it once a season or every fall. These ones I want to make greasable. So this one I think will be from the back. So it'll be underneath the mud flap. I'll just put in a 90 here and it won't be that hard to pull the mud flap of the bike back when it's on and grease this top one. Like I say, the bottom one's easy enough to pull that, the bolt out, pull your shock out of the way, and then just put some grease in that bearing. Pull, you've got to pull the bushing, like the inner part out like this to do it. Anyway, the other bearings weren't bad, but they weren't great. So it's probably good that I'm doing this. I'm going to try and save what I can just because you know how it goes. You, you'll usually find one bearing that looks like this and the rest are still pretty good. So if you can save a couple of decent used ones, sometimes that'll get you through the season without having to uh, wait for parts because right now it's just crazy waiting for parts. So what I'm doing is I'm just using an old bearing race here. That's going to give me a really nice surface to push on around here. It's big enough to let that bearing out of there. It's not going to jam up. And I found that just a chrome three quarter inch socket, this happens to be a Craftsman, just fits perfectly in this side. And these, once they once they start to move, I pop the seals out just with a screwdriver and a hammer. So just like this and get in there and you can pop that seal. These seals fit quite tightly in there. Like I can't, you probably won't be able to get a, get a screwdriver in and, and pop them out. You'll have to just tap it in and then pop the seal out. These were the ones from the shock bearing. They're just toasted. These ones were for one of the other, one of the linkage bearings here, and you can see where the lips all tore. So I don't want to, don't want to run anything like that. I want all this stuff to be tight. So once these start to move, like you can see that I've already started this one, just make sure everything's lined up well. I got enough swing in this vise. It doesn't take much to get them to slide out of there. So there's one, and now the inner, like I say, I'm going to try and keep some of these. I did put, you can see whether I put a bunch of never sees in there last time, but I changed these. You can see the never sees is still on them. So if it works, anti seize, pardon me. All right. So that is the, I guess that would be the lower. And then I got to get the upper here. I'm not sure if I got enough swing. I don't think I do to use a deep socket right off. I've got to crack them with the shallow socket because there's just not enough movement in this vise here. But as you can see, once they start to move, pretty easy to just push them right out. Just like a U-joint cap only, these probably, these probably slide even easier. So there's the inner. I think these ones could have been run still, but they they weren't great. Move my socket. These are just the perfect size. I guess if you have a lathe, you could always just build some push tools too. But why bother when if you got something that's it's gonna work as good as these sockets? All right. So there it is. There's the linkage done. Like I say, I'm gonna tap, drill and tap a grease nipple into here. And since those two bearings, there's a spot in between on both of them, on the lower, and that's where I put this grease nipple so the grease will, can get up inside. It'll hit this in the middle, and then it'll go into both bearings sideways this way. Then you'll be able to see that when you're greasing this. And if you've been riding in mud or dirt or whatever, you'll see the, the water push out, like if you've been riding through creeks a lot. When you grease these bearings, it'll push the water out and then you'll see fresh grease come out and the, it'll make your bearing life way longer. Like, I don't know what the guys riding, 
riding a track in dry conditions, I guess maybe you can get away with just taking the bolts out and greasing these once a year. But it, for the bush guys that are constantly going through creeks and mud puddles and things like that, doing this is really going to help. After every ride, you can just give it a shot of grease, a shot of grease, and then you could you could probably pop this one out or make this bolt greasable, and then you don't even have to take the bolt out to grease it. So that would work. All right. So next things. What I'm going to do is get a grease nipple in my top one here. If you look closely in there, you can even see where the uh, the inside, where the bearings sit and how there's just a little bit of a channel right in the middle. So it'll be right on this line here where the grease will, it'll allow the grease through past these, past the two bearings like that. So there's, I'm not sure which ones those are, two are wider than the other two. That. So there's probably an eighth of an inch when you get the seal surface, maybe less, but it will find its way into the bearing. So that's what I'll do next here. So it's things like this, you just got to make sure you get the right tap. I believe this is quarter, ended up being quarter inch bolt for the 90 that I've got here. But things like this, you spend a little extra time when you're doing your maintenance, make things greasable and it's going to save you a lot of money and time in the near future, in the future because you're going to be doing your bearings a lot less now that you're able to grease them. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to point that 90 to the side. And then hopefully when this is on the bike, it's going to sit there like this with the shock here and the mud flap behind the rear or below the rear fender going like right along here. Hopefully I can just get in there with a grease gun this way, even with maybe a longer needle if I need to and grease it. If not, I'll have to take the mud flap off. Either way, it's quicker than pulling this linkage out and replacing linkage bearings. So I'm just going to clean it up now and quite thoroughly here to make sure there's nothing left any grime or dirt here that's going to get into the new bearings. Might have to just clean this up a little bit. It looks like it's marred a bit on the outside. And then push in the new bearings and seals here. Okay, so here's the new bearings. Like always, I like to just smear a bit of fresh grease in there, some high quality grease. So I'm using metal on again. That's kind of my go-to for that. Just like to go ahead and put some anti-seize in these. It really seemed to hold in there last time and the bearings came out really easy. So just go ahead, uh, I've got the all balls kit here and it's really nice. It's the, I don't know how what the quality of the bearings is like. I've heard people say that maybe it's not the greatest. But the nice thing is, is it comes with all your seals and your bushings and all that stuff. So you don't have to order it all individually. It comes as a kit, which is nice. So just go ahead and I pretty sure these are almost all the same diameter except for the shock bearing so they're going to come in these little packages and stuff anyway that's pretty self-explanatory so i'm just going to after i put some grease in them and i get my anti seize on there to open this up first i'm just starting them right on the vice jaws like this like I say, they go pretty easy. Doesn't take a lot of force. I'm just going nice and slow. It's just like a U-joint cap. It doesn't take much to make those needles fall out of there. It's not, you know, you can you can find them all and pick them up and put them all back in, but it makes the job a lot less enjoyable to say the least. So now all you have to do is push them in far enough that you can get your seals in. And those seals you can see are really quite narrow. So you gotta go back just a little bit. 
On this particular one, there's lots of room inside there between the bearings, but you don't want to go in too far because your inside bushing, you want to make sure that these inside bushings don't, yeah, that's the one there, this little bit longer one here, that that's riding on the bearing surface and it's not too long or too short in there, if you know what I mean, so it's kind of centered. So I'm just going to do the same thing with my three quarter inch socket here. It's just the right size. And just make sure that when you do this, that your socket's lined up good and it's not going to catch the edge of your aluminum here and bend it over or mar it somehow. And you'll feel that right away if it starts to catch. Not too square there, so you want to keep it fairly square. And see, that's probably enough there that I can fit my seal in there. If the seal doesn't go deep enough, then of course you just got to push it in a little bit further. I think that I think I might have to go just a hair more. Because if you don't have your seal in far enough, it could catch when you put your linkage all back together again and tear your seal. And then it's, it's not going to do its job, of course. Well, I'm just going to a little bit further. That looks good. Now, like I said, I'm going to keep these old ones. They're not great, but they're not that bad either. They don't, they don't look like this and the needles don't all fall out of them. The reason why I do that is one, because I'm a bit of a junk collector, I'll admit it. But the other is that, like I said, you halfway through the, the season and you got to take your shock bolt out and all the, all the ball, uh, rollers fall out of one of these bearings and they're all rusty, but the rest are good. Then you, you got to order a linkage kit. You got to wait a week for that. You're going to miss out on riding. It could be close to the end of the season or at the beginning of the season when you really want to ride and get a couple of rides in. And you could just go ahead and push a couple of these in and it's going to get you through without buying a full linkage kit. And by the time this one's wore out, you're probably ready to do them all anyways. So anyways, that's, that's the reason why I'm going to keep some of these. And I'll just put some grease in there. They'll be held together. I have a couple of spares. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the other bearings. Check again. So this could be done, the, a nice way to do it would be with an arbor press because then your your part's going to be up here and you're going to be able to see it a lot better and you see your depth. You could also measure the the depth before you take it apart with a with your vernier calipers and then just make it the same as, as when you took it apart, the same spacing. I think that's about where I want it there. Make sure that the seals go in well. When you're installing these, it's good to use something that's going to push an arbor press. You could use a hydraulic press. There's not as good a feel with that. It would be really easy to maybe push a little bit too much. Or if your die is getting out of line with a hydraulic press and it catches the aluminum on the outside, it's going to be harder to notice that. But it can be done if that's what you want to do. But you don't want to, I wouldn't start hammering these in with a bearing driver and a hammer because like I said, it doesn't take much, even with the piece that goes in the middle there for your, for your bearing driver, it's risky. These needles, they fall out, then they get on the floor, they get on your workbench. If it's dirty, they're going to have dirt in them when you put them back in. And it's just a pain trying to find them all. Half the time you can't. Okay, so there you have it. I don't know how much I'm going to miss off the video there. I have to, have to clip because my phone fell over. It, I think it happened right at the end because I was just tapping. Once you get your bushing in there, this center piece, you can go ahead and just, if your seal doesn't want to go all the way in, just put your socket on there and tap it a bit because the bushing is going to hold your, the rollers on the bearing in place. So as I said, these, these bearings would get, may, might be able to help get you through the season the ones I took out but as you can see that this this is also important right the wear that you're going to have on on your bushing on the inside so like I say as in in the case of a spare part they're still pretty tight as but see kind of you know not great 
Uh, I think most of these are the same size. Maybe they might be slightly different. That's what might be going on there. But in any case, like I say, it's just sometimes good to have a couple kicking around in case you don't want to wait for the rest of the season to get your parts. There we go. So those are matched up. So those aren't those aren't super tight, but they would they would get you through. Same with this one. I think that's yeah, that's the lower shock bearing. Not tight, but it's also not or that's not the lower shock bearing. Anyways, you get my point. It, it might work. So let's see, what do we got? Oh yeah, so new our new spacers. And then that's definitely something the old ones that I, I'm gonna keep. You could use this would actually work quite well to install your seals because that's gonna hold the seal. I just never thought of using one. But if you're doing this, that'll seat the seals very nicely because of the, the way it's going to hold it. And it's going to it's going to push, have a nice surface area that's going to push on there, on the seal. So you might have noticed that I put one seal in backwards. And that's so the grease can escape easier through that seal. And it's not going to try to put, blow the seals right out of here. I only did that on the, on the bottom one because it's going to be, it's going to see the most grease. The rest I just put in normally. And as long as you're careful when you're pumping them full of grease, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so this one, I believe, doesn't need bushings. These bushings are for the one closer to the swing arm, which in my case, I've made greasable a long time ago. It doesn't need to be changed. So there you have it. So now I can finally put my bike back together after all that. It was definitely worth getting everything done on it. Now I know it's all gonna be tight and right. So, go back to the home shop and can carry on with this. All right, got my freshly revalved shock here. New spring, heavier spring for my weight, of course. Like I mentioned in our previous videos, the guys at the suspension shop there, uh, Ion 2, were excellent to deal with, got me in. Did it just a few minutes. I just waited for them to charge. It literally takes a couple minutes to do. So now I'm going to, I didn't change this linkage bearing because it's, I've got it greasable. You can see the, the grease zerk there in the front. It's protected so it doesn't get knocked off when I go over bumps and stuff, uh, pardon me, skid over rocks and whatnot. Got my rear down there. Got my rear grease zerk. Uh, swing the suspension and it's not going to, it's not going to hit anything. It's not going to contact anything that I can see. So I should be able to just move my mud flap, stick a grease nipple, pardon me, a grease gun in there and give it a shot. So I'm just going to, I want to get this back together. It's been because of waiting for parts, even though some parts showed up fairly quickly, it's taken over, it's, I'm a month late on this job. So the season's going by, I've, there's still lots of season left to ride, but I'm only going to get this thing out for a couple of rides probably this year. Like I say, I, I'm going over to dual sports. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together to complete this part of the series. Next, we'll be straightening this subframe. It's got a little bit of a bend in it. Fender doesn't really sit right. Straighten that out. And then I'm going to be putting my new graphics kit on my new, the new UFO plastic kit that I've got. No, it's a service, a service, whatever, plastic kit. That'll be going on the bike. So if you're interested, if you like it, I'll take you along, watch the rest of the series on this if you if you like the MX stuff. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna get this thing put back together. What I mentioned is I put the Promoto billet kickstand on this bike, and when I first got it, I put a pad I had a, I was running a paddle tire because we were riding the dunes, and the there was a little linkage, a piece down here. You can see where I've welded a bracket in behind there that's steel. There was a piece that kind of went from this socket screw here. And it, I can't remember exactly what, I think it went to, to there. Anyway, the paddle tire would make contact with the kickstand when it was, when it was up like this. And that rattle, like that constant impact on the, on the kickstand, eventually broke this link down in this, this link. I can't remember where it, where it went, but it was really kind of a goofy little a chunk of aluminum this bolted to and then it bolted into here to your chain roller or something. And it was really weak. It broke and the people at Pro Bono Billet 
were really good about it. They said they'd supply the parts, even though it wasn't warrantied because I put a modified rear tire on it. They say any, any modification to the bike, fair enough. They, uh, they won't warranty if you've modified the bike and it, and it affects a kickstand. So, but they did say they would sell me the, or I think they were gonna send me it for free anyways. But what I ended up doing is building this piece here. It's like a U-shaped piece of steel. This has still got the steel frame. I just welded it in there. I put this nut, this bolt through, and then I put a nut on the other side. It was also threaded. So it's, I know it's going thread to thread, but that'll never come, this, this bolt will never loosen up because of that, like a nylock on the other side. So that's just something you can do. I've notched it so I can still get my bolt out of my chain roller. The thing I did not do that I should have is your linkage, your, your bolt for your front linkage there. Make sure you can, you put that in from the other side so that you can knock it out. If I have to take that out, I'll just cut this and we'll re-weld it back together again. It's no big deal. But anyways, that was something that I just noticed that if you're putting a Promoto kickstand, billet kickstand on this, the two things that you might want to know is that don't run a paddle tire with the kickstand, but also you can make it a lot stronger by just putting a piece in there. Pretty straightforward. It took me like, I don't know, an hour down at the shop one night to go ahead and get that in. Now, first things first, I've got to put my long bolt through into my linkage at the bottom here first. So I'm going to be putting anti-seize compound on all this stuff. It's always down in the dirt and the mud. It's also one of the reasons why you have to want to you want to put it on there is because you've got dissimilar metals here so you've got aluminum and steel and plus plus a lot of salts and in mud the the mud is going to contain all kinds of different minerals and salts that's going to want to get in there and cause corrosion in between your your inside race on the bearing that sleeve collar whatever you want to call it and the aluminum the aluminum and steel of course are going to be want to corrode naturally because they're dissimilar metals so just it's always nice to just put this on there i couldn't believe how easy those bearings i've seen linkage bearings seize up and take a lot more grunt to get out than what i ended up using to press those those linkage bearings out of the linkage itself and the reason why is because I covered them in, in anti-seize compound, but I also, the greasable ones, that grease is going to stay in there and, and chase the water and the minerals and stuff out after you've been riding. Now, like I said, I can't grease them all. So what you got to do is follow your manual's direction and take an acid brush and grease those, take these bolts out, take your linkage out, it doesn't take that long, and grease those in the off season or even mid-season if you're riding a lot. Okay, I'm gonna carry on with this. Follow along if you enjoy watching things getting fixed. Going to time-lapse, I'm sure you guys have all seen the, seen the installs, reverse of, the, of taking it apart here. So I'm gonna move on to getting that shock in there next, it looks like. Couldn't find the bolt that holds the upper shock mount in <clears throat> at home. Awesome. Here it is sitting in a box down at work where I rebuilt the shock. So you probably know what that feels like. Anyway, at least I did it the fun way I rode down. Probably good that I came into town and got this anyways. I had to drop some stuff off too. So back to the home shop to finish the job.
See what I mean about the back fender? So apparently the subframe's bent. The side likely is lower, pulling that fender down, obviously, as you can see. Probably don't have to point that out to you. Sorry. Just got the fender stuck in there. I, I unbolted it. Just so I can push it back in and reference it. I haven't really seen much for videos on how to straighten a rear subframe. Like I can, just looking at it, I can see the one side is lower. And I already told you guys, I come from a heavy duty background. And usually when we fix stuff, we do stuff like this. Um, I didn't think about how I'm gonna hold the bike down. But, <clears throat> I think that we should be able to tweak it a bit by doing that. I'm thinking that it was leaned over one time, probably on that side, and that bent everything this way. So when this, the whole subframe may have to go that way. I guess it's kind of laddered. I've got to move the whole thing. So I'm going to have to try to clamp it down maybe. And then find a way to tweak it. I, I, I guess I'm, I haven't seen any videos on how to straighten a subframe or much posts. So I'm probably, I'm just doing what I, what I'm think is going to work. If you guys have any suggestions or know of a way or if you've done this yourself, go ahead and giving me an idea of what you're what you've done what'll work in the comments but i do want to get that sitting straight before i put my new plastic on it does look it looks like it's tweaked pretty good there as you can see so i'm gonna work on that a little bit try and get it done get it straightened up a little so i'm not going to bother it's starting to look more like a bike now and that's great. But I'm not gonna bother going ahead with the new plastic yet. I'm gonna take it down. I don't have a pressure wash here, so I'm gonna take it down to workshop and pressure wash it off. Probably shoot some more grease in the bearings after I, I use the pressure washer because I do want to get it clean. And you probably saw how it was, some of the aluminum stained a bit, so I can put some super clean on there. Get that done. I really love this bike. <clears throat> I hate to let it go, but Anyways, like I just, I got enough bikes. So I just wanted to, I'm going to leave this video at that now. I'll, I'll let you know what I end up doing with the subframe or I might film a little bit more. I've got some plans this evening. I've got to get, get to those. So I'm going to leave this video at that. It's, it's just good that I got the shock back in the bike. I'm really happy that things are kind of coming along now. And it's going to look a lot better with some graphics instead of just beat up yellow and white plastic on it too. So if you want, if you like the videos, definitely come back and I'll show you the rest, the finished product, what this bike is going to look like when it's done, which is, it's going to look like a lot better than it does now and probably like new. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. If there's something, cause I am a licensed mechanic. If there's something you guys would like explained in the videos, if you'd like me to do a video about something, hydraulic principles, electrical, something like that, and you think I could help, let me know and I can make a video. I know my videos aren't getting a whole bunch of views at this point, but my channel is also very, new at this point as well so please give me a like if you like the videos if you like this kind of content to give me a comment let me know what you guys want to see do you like the muscle car stuff do you like the old trucks do you like the car shows i know everybody likes the rust valley guys i'm trying to get a little bit more uh, footage of those guys but this year i wasn't able to get out to the swap meet to see them i know i'm, I'm, I'm working on it so hopefully i can get some more of that I know, so I already know you guys are going to want to see those guys, but it's just very limited. My association with them is because I'm not that close to where they, they are at. Anyways, thanks for subscribing. I know the channel's just beginning. It's like I'm just starting out with this, but I appreciate everybody who's subscribed. The channel wouldn't even exist without you guys, and everybody starts somewhere. So I'm really happy about that. This bike, uh, I'm going to do a couple more on this if you guys want to watch the, like I say, the finished product. Plastic sitting here. So come back and next one will probably be straightening the subframe and getting the new plastic on. I got some service work to do. When I take it down and wash it off, I'll probably have to, I'll, I'll change transmission oil. I, the air filter's all dirty. I got to wash that up and just get it all serviced and ready to go. Because I would like to take it for a couple more rides. I think I'm going to 
like I say, I'll probably be advertising it, but I want to get the rider side sag set and see, just see what that rear shock feels like now. Anyways, again, thank you everybody for watching and stay tuned for more.